Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Esther and I am a traveling fine artist currently in Mexico. And if you are new here, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you will not miss any of my new videos. And now let's get into it. The format of this vlog is completely different from what I usually do. I don't have any script written, so please give me grace and just be in the moment with me. You guys, look, this is tortillas in the coconut the most interesting thing i saw lately we are in mexico city with this girl mary it's rice milk water anyway i never tried it and it's gonna be interesting we are decided to try local kitchen local cuisine sorry today gonna see how it tastes like to be like locals honestly I'm slightly disappointed that's not what I imagined I don't know what it is it's chicken soup you have it in your room that's disgusting that's how they measure temperature here isn't this just heaven? It's like, I don't know, one dollar, maybe a dollar and a half per kilo of mangoes and they're super ripe and nice. This whole time, like this whole trip was like so unexpected and so in the moment. That's why I didn't really manage to film anything like in between. And now it has been already over three and a half months here in Mexico. I'm enjoying this so much. And now since I'm leaving, I'm like, I never did any vlogs from Mexico. And it was amazing. And I feel like sharing, but I feel like I was processing so many things and I was like mentally and physically exhausted a little bit and has been like good and bad and in between transitions and yeah I just felt like I can do a video still because I gathered like a lot of video material and I film a lot here but it is gonna be a little bit spontaneous so let's stick around it's still gonna be fun as you know like I lived in Italy for a little while and then I moved to Sweden and then I moved back to Ukraine and then since I was processing things and I didn't know like where to go and what to do it's like still college restrictions it's still like a lot of stuff going on in the world and you don't really know what you can and cannot do I was like okay let's see what is open and let's see like where is warm because I would better like if something gets off and I'm still like, I'm not as productive as I want to be. Like I would rather be somewhere under the palm tree uh, dealing with my stuff <laughs> than being like in the cold Ukraine or Sweden when it's like, just, just cold makes us a little bit, yeah. <laughs> so I got here, I booked my ticket. I got here in, like beginning of April no regrets it's like it was the most spontaneous decision but it was the best decision I could possibly make in this season seriously guys it's like it was like a little bit out of like hope hopelessness in the beginning and like other things and I didn't expect Mexico to surprise me in any way it is exotic it is a different part of the world it is across the ocean but I didn't have any expectation it wasn't like ever a place I really looking forward to go so 
I was like, let's try it out, like because it just seems like it still could be fun. And I I came here in the beginning with my friend um, Marie that I met in Italy, and <laughs> this is a bird. <laughs> and I lived with her in Sweden, and we did a couple projects and collaborations together. So we also like she decided to came uh, to come for, uh, with me for the first couple of weeks and we did some collaboration in Mexico as well as we started our trip together and we explored and we went to like ruins and we went to Chicken Itza which is like um, one of the seven wonders of the world that I didn't know it's in the area but I was really happy like I wasn't like magnified like I don't know like it wasn't like a big deal for me to see this thing but when I acknowledge that like it's one of the seven wonders of the world I'm like that's kind of cool today we in Koba ruins which is like um, another like inks pyramids and we didn't pay to hear all the history but I heard quite a lot last time so today we're just exploring on our own and this is a different um, town but you can see that it's like really huge and old they used to allow before to climb the stairs but now it's forbidden but it's still really beautiful so yeah we painted in the like on the ruins a lot we were painting in the wildlife we got bitten by iguanas never feed iguanas just don't just please with wild animals here in mexico and probably in florida and i think everywhere just safety requirements just don't touch them just don't bug them just don't feed them okay because if it, you do not touch them they do not touch you and you are fine but we decided to feed them the bananas we have and they start chasing us and then they were trying to hit on our acrylics and our art supplies and it was a mess but yeah lesson learned don't feed iguanas and don't get iguanas close to your art supplies so today I'm having breakfast and it's super beautiful. This is super excited. Um, I have some cooking going on right here. Plants and work, and this is a new watercolor I'm gonna do today. Hopefully during the breakfast. That's the new challenge I have lately. I know if you can hear me, guys, because of the waterfall. But look at this. Look at this amazing vegan toast. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. And chai frappuccino. And murals again. Feels like just the most perfect place to work. Originally, I was about to live in Cancun. Then Cancun ended up being too shady and too far from the sea, like the ocean and the coastal line and everything. So I decided to move, even though like I lo I lost a lot of money on rent because I paid like in advance for a couple months living in Cancun. I saw like I picked the perfect location, and then the owner and ended up being like so rude and just like not understanding so i lose all of my money and it was not a great beginning of the trip it was a lot of stress with like even like from going for customs like I, I forget to print like one more paper and they were like holding me free freaking hours on the border just because i didn't like i was one paper missing that could be like just simply printed like on the spot and that's what happened later and I got in yeah I had to change Cancun after a while like to Playa I really enjoyed living in Playa I feel like Tulum is a little bit overrated yes it's more like young people it's more like different parties and stuff going on it's more like digital nomads and creatives there but Again, like if you live in town and not in the fancy resort, you have to like have a bike or you have to take a taxi, which is like insanely overpriced to get to the beach line, to the beachfront, or you have to like rent a car and I don't really drive. So it wasn't an option for me. So I ended up like loving Tulum, but not finding it a good fit for what I was trying to do because I love just like having ocean, like I grew up on the ocean, I love having ocean on the walking distance, just like going there with all of my stuff, paint on the beach and just having like downtown and ocean close by. That's why I picked Playa and I loved it so much. 
because it was like a perfect combination. Everything was like 10 minutes uh, walking distance, everyone was close. It's a little bit too touristy, like on the main street, it's like everyone trying to sell you something. It's crazy. <laughs> A lot of like dances and other thing going on. It's so fun, but it's a little bit crazy. <laughs> but yeah, Playa was a good choice, and we like me and my friends. The friends I came with and had friends visiting from the States and I have new friends that I made here so like I was traveling a little bit to different parts of Yucatan which is the region I'm living in. I didn't get to go to Mexico City this time, hopefully next time, but I saw it's good to concentrate in one place especially because I was also working. I, it wasn't just like a fun trip like you can see none of my trips are just for fun. I'm always like working. paint a little bit and go to the beach or rather than just going to the beach obviously and it was like such a good choice because here is like so much shadow and so relaxing and I'm painting um, the sketch with watercolor today I'm more smart and I brought more art supplies with me so yay for the smart decisions in your life and as we were painting we got like offered this like a possible collaboration, I guess. In this place, they just like love art and they want to do like expos and they want to do like, they just like invite artists from all over to do stuff at the property. It's like really uh, nice, fancy hotel or yeah, I think it's a hotel and resort. Yeah, and there's a restaurant. So it's, it's really nice. Like I'm so excited. Like you never know, like every time you like you go somewhere and they like, should I paint or should I not? Like, should I bring my art supplies or I'm just gonna be lazy? But every time you go out and you paint and you just like show up and do your work, like opportunities come and like once again, I just like being reminded about that and I feel like it's really important for all of the creative people and also artists just go out and do your work, just like show it to someone, don't paint in private. Like if you wanna increase your following, you wanna increase your, how do you say that? <laughs> how do you even say that? Like if you wanna have more people like involved in your journey, what you do and wanna increase the impact, that's the word, increase the impact. You just have to go out like you have like every time you go somewhere like you go for coffee you go to the beach you go to like wherever you go like literally wherever you go you go on the street just bring something small just bring like sketches bring paints and make yourself visible like i think for artists these days it's like really important that's what i learned even when i was in my first art school back to ukraine it's like I don't care about like how many likes and comments I get on the social media if I even like able to sell something on social media because in the beginning of my journey I really didn't like uh, I have no idea about that but like I knew that like no matter how hard the art market is in my country like if I go out and paint and I just show up and I make myself visible that people can see uh, what I'm doing I'm gonna have success in it because I'm gonna find people that appreciate it so just like really friendly uh, reminder for myself even about how life of the artist go and how opportunities come your way and how you can just be open and make a space for them to come yeah okay and this is the place we are painting today it's like so cool we already ate all our guacamole <laughs> Gabi is painting so something good. tropical too and we have mojitos and margaritas and what else you need for a good life, Gabby? Painting, this is it. beach, drinks, right? Cool vibes. Cool vibes. It's all great. Yeah, and this is the art I'm doing. 
one of the sites um, here in the area. We're in Tulum. This is my banana Jose. Jose, say hi. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> and this is the view we have. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm such a dream. Big. I didn't order anything yet, but they already brought me a bunch of stuff. And this is actually cactus. Um, like it's like cooked cactus. It's really interesting. We went to Merida for a trip like uh, recently, and it was amazing. Like Merida is like such a beautiful European town, and it's definitely worth checking out. Guys, where are we? It's for YouTube. He's a man. What is that? <laughs> it's a yellow town. Why it's yellow? Hmm? Two know. reasons. Why is it first, the first thing that they said is because they painted it yellow to attract the Pope, the Pope for oh, a visit. Okay. okay. The Makes second sense. reason people say is because they wanted to worship a Mayan god. So there's like two reasons. Okay. Makes sense. Maybe a little bit of both. Thanks. Thank you, sharing. And it's actually getting even more yellow with every step. I take it's just getting more and more yellow. And look at this, it's so smart. They have these holes on the ground, like these canals. So when the rain comes down, the water will go down and will not overflow the streets. Actually reminds me of Italy somehow, like everyone driving like motorcycle. Um, it's really colorful. It's a lot of flowers. More ruins. Let's take a closer look. See them all there, super. Palm trees. Super cool. This town is really, really nice. It like has almost European vibe to it. It's like the streets are really like clean and clean, and oh, we cannot see it really well, but it's really like it doesn't feel like a tourist town. It feels like people actually live here, and there's like a lot of really nice, authentic shops and restaurants still but it's not like overly crowded it's still mexico but it's it's really different really different from what they have seen so far and we are doing the tour bus first time hi guys say hi first time <laughs> It's gonna be fun. We're like on the roof of this like touristic buses, you know, that people take to see the city. And we are going. That's actually a really nice town. I'm surprised of like how different it is. And 
and I feel like if I would come there earlier, I would move there, if, even though there's like no ocean there, just because it's like really, really nice and clean and it has like this Paris or Italian vibe, like in architecture, like it has this cathedrals and French restaurants and I don't know, it just, just really nice. I loved it. We, we had like really nice uh, art Airbnb as well, so we enjoyed the um, little today that we had. So that's our Airbnb and it looks quite nice out here and this is where we spend the night. I love my trip to Cozumel. I went there like actually two times. When you snorkel on the coral reefs, it's something outstanding. It just sounds me out of this world. It's so full of color. And I feel like that's what inspired my latest series that I created here in Mexico with like ocean and couples and reefs and boat rides and it's actually an open cenote we can jump there with a platform to enjoy it's life it's not yeah it's not uh, right now refresh <laughs> do you like my office yes yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a bit claustrophobic. Yes. <laughs> it's like it's so small. That's really tiny over there. Yeah. I hope they are counting us. <laughs> <laughs> survive the dive <laughs> in the cave i did survive Oh no, what is it? What is that? Bats. Bats? Yeah. The real. Oh no. That's so scary. Oh, that's very cute. I only brought my tennis shoes on the whole trip so it's pretty hilarious how painful it is to walk everywhere and it's like it wasn't the best choice but I have to have to just make it work it's super beautiful here and we visited this four different notes. Uh, this specific location called Casa Tortuga. I'm pretty sure some wild people were like jumping from there, but I'm just not as brave. Um, like I know how to swim. I just have like anxiety of heights and stuff. So um, I'm in the process of dealing with it. So this is called Cenote, which is the uh, underground caves where you can swim. And here how this looks from above. It's kind of scary for me. But we're gonna try.
I almost drowned right now. Oh yeah, it was a big joke for everyone. <laughs> so I was trying to film and I, I didn't mind the gap in between the platforms and I always drowned my phone with all my content. So, but it's beautiful. We're enjoying our time so much. So just like seeing corals and seeing all the exotic fish in just like crystal clear water, it's just amazing. And one trip after like really choppy, rough boat ride um, and snorkeling and being completely exhausted, but like super happy. Uh, it was like this moment when the sky was this pastel purple and the water was this crystal clear turquoise and then it was like the shimmering sun highlights on the surface and like in combination with everything I saw underwater and then it was like a field of starfish underneath I'm like oh my goodness I have to paint it so I think this was like the strongest and like the most bright and vivid experiences I had that impacted my new series of work dramatically yeah and it's amazing how like it started like really low i was like super discouraged super upset it's like everything just like not going the way i wanted also my family got covid like right before i was like flying to mexico so i had to stay away of the house and i couldn't see them and i had to travel because of like this time actually i had to travel because of the covid restrictions because of some reasons of like how ukraine deals with like shipping original art abroad which is my main source of income like i couldn't ship anything while it was like locked down in ukraine but the border was open and mexico was open so like basically in the first place moving to mexico was like that's how i can like keep on doing my freelance business and like work on different projects so that's what i did i was not expecting mexico to be such a flourishing place for my soul <laughs> and for my business and for everything i do as an artist and i didn't expect that much of impact i was like really surprised that i'm saying that like it's the best decision i ever made so far like with all of my traveling i mean moving to italy one day before the first lockdown happened was a gem no doubt <laughs> but this trip because like i wasn't looking forward at all going here and then how much it enriched my life just amazing yeah sometimes you just have to keep on going and keep on moving and that's how the most amazing thing can come into your life you never know i work on different like murals and different projects i painted a mural in the airbnb like apartment uh, house that i was seeing first couple months after i moved from cancun of course that was the fun project we started it together with marie and then i finished it with my another friend gabby from the us and it was like really fun to work with and also pay for my rent for some of my rent during that time so that was like a really cool collaboration and exchange and that's what you also guys like if you traveling as an artist that's what you can do you can just like reach out to local businesses to the hotels resort to the restaurant like and offer your work and offer like what you do and you never know like because if your goal is to travel and like to make art meanwhile it might be a really good solution like for just like not spending extra on like rent or other things like in italy i painted this like really small thing for the restaurant and i was getting like free food and drinks like for a while <laughs> after that and i built like an established like really meaningful connections and friendships because of that yeah like things like that just make every trip more personal and more rich and more just like it enriched you in so many ways i couldn't even like put it in words in how many ways <laughs> but that's what i did 
but it's it's really hot it's really hot to paint in these conditions yes it's like it's in the shade but it's still outside and the weather has been really wild yeah but we like challenges yeah we, we do i have the best helper to yeah. do murals she's so great i think my brain is melted already but that's what we're doing. That's Marie again. She's doing such a great job using sleeves. Yes. And I have been doing a great job talking about stuff and not making any sense lately. But it's okay. In Mexico is really loud. And there is a lot of birds and cars and all of the noise, all kinds of the noise. Super destructive. But it makes you feel alive in a way. That's a parrot behind the parrot, and we have a cactus and leaves and palms and flowers and all this stuff. Super exciting. Um, I finished with those earlier. Yeah, kind of trying to fill all of the empty spots. And what else? This wall we have over here, I've almost finished with this part, I just have to do some final touches with the sleeves, maybe one more cactus, maybe more details of the cactus. Um, this part we decided to make like emerging from the grass and from like all these bushes to kind of like extend the feelings of like jungle and stuff and that's our backyard and it's really junglish and green and inspiring so we basically create like a feeling of the entrance to the jungle in a way and also collaborated with different um, resorts meanwhile and it's amazing also like how this opportunity came up because in the beginning, I was like super unmotivated. I was like doing the small works uh, on the beaches, like sketches and stuff, but I was not really in my mind. Like I was not even thinking of doing bigger works, even though I wanted an exhibition, like, and I prayed for it. And like, I, I asked for it. That was, I was really, really wanting to do an exhibition in Mexico, but then I was not acting on it, obviously. So I, w I wasn't painting. I'm like, what's the point? I'm going to leave the country and like, where are you going to put all of my art? And then like one day when me and Gabby, my friend, we were painting in this like beachfront restaurant, uh, just like doing sketches. And that day, honestly, I'm like, I better go to the beach that like sit and paint another sketch because I'm just, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> but the uh, like owner came and they were like, oh, we're gonna do video, we're gonna do marketing, we're gonna do this and this and this. And like we searching all over the world for artists to come here and expose and we like help them to sell and stuff. So I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's a great opportunity and like it came like this, you know, but they were like we need 10 portfolio pieces We need like huge like meter at least, you know, like 32 by 40 inches um, And 10 of them artworks in order to display because that's how we do that and like great one week deadline is enough So basically in one week or so I created 10 plus pieces. I live for deadlines just letting you know, I live for them. It's like, if you want to get me motivated about something, give me deadlines and I'm gonna do my best. So in this one week, <laughs> I created more than I did in this whole three months in Mexico, even though I was working and painting all of the time, just because I had deadlines. It was amazing, the show was amazing, my paintings got wet on the way to Tulum because it was pouring rain once, but they survived and nothing bad happened. I'm really happy and they made it to a couple more exhibitions. It just like started, like as soon as like I just get over this mentality and I painted these 10 pieces in a week, in seven days, it just like started this like huge snowball that like more exposition, more opportunities were coming and I collaborated with this other resort and I met so many people who like were interested in my art. I just like, it's, it's amazing. Like I sold a couple pieces as well. The pieces I sold, they paid for like half of my trip here in Mexico. So I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty proud and happy about that, honestly. Just like one more reassuring, I guess, that like wherever 
you're doing, like if you're doing this with all of your heart and you just keep on pushing through, you're gonna get there, you're gonna get where you want to be and you just need to do your part, you just need to do all that is like possible for you to do and God wanna do the impossible and opportunity is gonna come and it's gonna work out in the end and that's the beauty of it. So this is the road to the beach, I'm walking back. Sometimes I'm surprised of how random my uh, filming um, episodes are. I'm like rarely <laughs> remembering about uh, filming for YouTube. And then I'm like, oh, that's a nice walk, let's talk. This is a nice review of the town and there's some like hollow area around. And this is again the way to the beach. And this is the ugly part, but part of life. Now the sun is heating again. The town is really nice, really nice. Um, I love Playa, I'm glad I moved here. Um, Tulum is a little bit shady and it's like some shootings going on time to time, so it's not fun. Cancun was really shady, <laughs> so I end up. Not staying there, even though I saw they're gonna stay there for the whole time, and I didn't, which I'm really happy. I lose like 700 on the rent right in the first week, just because the place just wasn't like compatible with my job, and it was like really loud. Another street. I have so many tips for our ne my next destinations but I'm walking here right now this whole day um, and it's like really abundant beaches and places and parks just like in palm trees and like mango trees uh, reminded me so much about Nepal so I was like man I really wish I could back I could get back to Asia at some point really soon because I miss it so much and Nepal was like probably the most life-changing trip I ever took in my life so it was like I don't know how it's gonna feel like if I go back there if it's gonna get me the same feeling or it's gonna be completely different and there's like just some seasons in your life that's the place I'm always eating, which reminds me of Nepal a lot as well. We have the best street tacos and food plates. I don't know, it just feels like really homey. Yeah. Nice. So I thought, maybe I'm just gonna walk you through the streets of Mexico. And specifically for the streets of Light and Carmen, which is the city where I live. It's pretty Mexican on one side, and it's still like quite European uh, touristy on the other. Uh, there's no pay pass, it's like rarely pay pass available. This is a bike station. Reminds me of Italy so much, but I didn't try it yet. Maybe I should. Goodness, isn't this is just like the most pleasant color and texture? I think it's the most artsy fruit I ever encountered in my whole life. Mexico um, officially won my heart because look what I found. I found a bubble tea in Mexico. It took me ages to find it in Ukraine and then it wasn't real bubble tea. More than excited, more than excited. And it's actually like I'm like. What do you expect from the street bubble tea in Mexico? It's actually so good. So, I'm excited. I found so many things I love here. No need to move anywhere else. 
so it's gonna be a little bit sad to move. So this is Valentina and she's stained glass artist. And she does a lot of really cool things. So these are templates, right? Yeah. This is the glass. Is it like spe some specific type of glass or is it like pre-made? Um, this is actually just glass that I got from another artist. So I don't know what kind of glass it is. I should know, I wish I knew, but um, but I don't, <laughs> sorry. It just like looks, you know, not something you find. Yeah, this is glass. more than anything, it's just a good find. I know it's quality glass because of the way that it breaks. Mm -hmm. Like you'll have um, cheaper glass that is just way too fragile and you can tell when you cut it But this is a good sturdy glass and it has a really nice um, Pastel color and <laughs> It's always super helpful as always in the studio Yeah, especially when you work with glass <laughs> <laughs> And what we're gonna do is we're gonna score here This is um, a diamond cutter and then you give it a couple taps and now we have this piece isolated which makes the rest of it a lot easier. We're gonna go ahead and cut here now. <laughs> but um, from here then uh, we would put it on the grinder. This has a diamond bit that is somewhere. Um, so yeah, we have a diamond bit grinder that spins in circles and you just kind of grind off all the excess glass that you can't get with a cutter. And then you have copper foil and this uh, reacts to the heat this lead-based metal and then you get this and everything. Can you explain the process a little bit? Yes, I start with carton to make the shape with carton and then the volume I make it with newspaper mm -hmm. and then I put some glue to make it firm and then it Those starts really cool. with a lot of this material that is called gesso, gesso. Mm -hmm. that it's like a mix, it's like plaster but it has mm -hmm. more, it's more professional and um, it has a lot of layers of this so then when it's over, I don't know if I have one ready like then, the one? then it's this when one? I can paint like for example this mm -hmm. and when it's ready is that the carrot or it's a plant? it's like a plant with a uh, plant pot Okay, and kind you put of. them inside of this? Yes, and then Aww. they live here. <laughs> <laughs> Little house, that's super yes. cool. <laughs> I have some ready to Oh, yeah. that's super beautiful. The corn. The corn. Mm -hmm. I need one of those. <laughs> and they're really light. That, that's mm -hmm. a good thing. Okay, I think I'm ready for creative photo shoot. That's all the stuff we're gonna use. That's me. And here is this little guy. Hi, bro. What are you doing here? Oh, I see, I see. That's what you want. You're beautiful. Wanna fly away? Wanna fly away? No? <laughs> I see, I see. Not afraid of me, huh? No way. This is how the Mexican post looks like. It's almost like Ukraine. I'm not surprised. Hopefully it works. I just want to share with you guys something really funny because I, I was living a couple weeks in this like hotel room. Um, in Playa because I had to change apartments and I just like I didn't find anything so I was living in this hotel room and like 
the cleaning ladies, like uh, the cleaning staff comes like every single day or like every second day and they just like, make this insane towel designs every time on my bed and like usually it's like swans or doves or rose petals or like other other stuff and it was like okay i mean one time they did a dinosaur and like i have like a huge amount of appreciation for that because it was like really creative but today <laughs> i'm like it freaked me out like i'm basically walking into the room and i see this like is this a person on my bed and i'm like i almost jump it's like it's it's too much it's like why in the world you will be doing something like this it's like come on people it's, it's not so funny well let me show you <laughs> hey what's your name you have a jacket <laughs> and a rose uh, Sorry, not sorry. I am so happy. My last couple days are gonna be with more comfort. I have such a lovely place. Look at this. It's incredible. Oh, it's open. It has a cute balcony and the garden. It's gonna be super quiet, so I can work and on my projects. And yeah, I'm super happy with this one. I'm gonna get the most from these last days in Mexico. <laughs> what a lovely place I rented this time. Look at this, it's a little bit dark. It's super cozy. It's a little bit windy today, but I got to swim for a little while, just enjoying sunset. Really making the most out of my last couple days in Mexico. Yeah, that's shortly how my trip was. I'm Heading to my next destination, which I'm not gonna tell you yet, but you're gonna see it on my Instagram. If you follow, if you don't follow, please follow my Instagram because it's like way more videos and stuff there. I'm staying here for the last couple of days in Mexico, trying to get all of my art shipped and organized. This is like really beautiful rooftop that they have. It's just beautiful. <laughs> I'm just enjoying this so much. I'm like super grateful for this whole time and for this trip and for every single person I met on this trip and all of the meaningful connections, all of the um, friends and acquaintances that I... Like all of the amazing people that I got to know during this time. I also started learning Italian with tutor on site here. So I'm gonna switch to online now. It's a little bit sad, but it's it's amazing. Just amazing how rich this time was. And thank you guys for all of the support and all of the encouragements during like the season. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope to get back to YouTube and filming more of the content really soon. It's really hard to multitask at the time, but I'm gonna work on my multitasking skills and my time management skills hopefully and we're gonna get easier but thank you again so much for everyone stay tuned for the updates that are coming because i'm going to the next country and it's gonna be super fun thank you for joining i will see you soon bye <laughs>